Chris Cooks today, 2019. It's the first episode of the year. We got to do something really, really good. Pot roast is pretty simple, but there's ways that we can make it a little bit more flavorful and a little more interesting um, and honestly a little more healthy, a little more fresh. First thing I have is um, I have two chuck roasts here. So th this is actually for dinner tonight for a bunch of people who are coming over. So I've kind of um, I'm making a large batch of this. Um, you can cut everything down in half. Each of these chuck roasts is about two pounds. Um, and I've trimmed off the outer, more fattier pieces. But we're just going to season this with some salt um, and pretty liberally. We're using quite a bit of salt on this because our braising liquid is unsalted beef stock. Then pepper, we actually want a coarse grind on this. Probably total, you're looking at a tablespoon on each roast. And then I have some ground allspice, probably two teaspoons onto each one. So a teaspoon on each side. Now I have a pan back here, a six quart Dutch oven that's been on medium heat here, heating up. Just gonna take some olive oil couple tablespoons of that and then these will go right in and we're just gonna sear them on each side while that's going um, our next step is going to be building up our broth uh, that everything's gonna get cooked in um, and so we're gonna prepare the ingredients for that starting with the onion this is one I would say pretty large yellow onion, and we're just gonna dice it as small as you can get it. The reason we cut this up so small, we're also gonna do the same thing with the celery. We want it to kind of melt into the braising liquid and not just have big chunks of, uh, of onion in there. So with the celery, I just have kind of the inner parts of the stock. This is the best part, in my opinion, for soups, stews, braises, um, pot roast, uh, things like that. And so these are just the more tender, slightly bitter parts of the celery. They just have such a good flavor that they add. They almost act more like an herb than a vegetable. It's really nice. So these have been washed, and we're just gonna cut these up nice and small. Now we'll check on the pot roast and see how the sear is coming. This, I can tell, yeah, it's getting a good crust on it. You can see these parts here, they're getting a good crust, and that is leaving what's called fond into the pan, which is gonna help us build some more flavor. Next for the broth vegetables um, and fruit, I have an apple. We're just gonna cut off the top and bottom, then we'll peel it, and that is also going to get diced up real small. We'll just cut out the core, cut around it, that part. Try and get it about as small as the onions are. Now we have four garlic cloves. These are fairly large ones. Just give them each a pop on the side with your knife. Peel each of the garlic cloves, cut off the stem, and you can just leave them whole as they are, just mashed. Don't need to cut them up. The last thing for this step, two uh, ripe tomatoes. Dice those up. They don't have to be as small because they'll really break down. Um, but when you cut them in half, take out the green stem part. Just a medium dice is fine. Okay, the next phase of the cooking here Preheat the oven, we'll go 325. Then we're ready to take the pot roast out and we'll just put it right back on the pan that it was on or the uh, tray that it was on uh, just to let it rest a little bit while we do the rest of this stuff. All right, add in another tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of oil. And then our vegetables uh, that we've cut up, the apple, garlic, celery, and onion. It's going right in the pan.
And we're gonna let that sweat on just below medium and we'll stir it every once in a while. What's gonna happen is all of the liquid that's being drawn out of the vegetables is gonna break up the fond in the bottom of the pan and pull it up and it's just gonna flavor everything in there. It's gonna be really nice. Uh, I am gonna add just a pinch of salt and pepper to it though. So now we're going to prepare our herbs and that's where a lot of our flavor comes from. I have a bay leaf, two to three uh, sprigs of fresh oregano, one large sprig of uh, rosemary, and then two large sprigs of thyme. These are just two, uh, but you want quite a bit of thyme in there. And I'm going to wrap it up in cheesecloth because if I don't, the leaves and everything fall off, which is fine for everything except the rosemary. Uh, the rosemary leaves, they just get into everything and it's just, it's less pleasant to eat. Um, and so we are going to wrap it all up here and tie it up with some butcher's twine. We're just gonna take that packet, put it right in there, just stir it around to get covered. So we cover that up just a little bit, get it to the bottom of the pan, and the heat on there is going to just bring out some of those natural oils and um, the fragrances of the herbs that make everything so good. While that's going, finish building our actual liquid. This is one and a half quarts of unsalted beef stock, and to it I'm going to add three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, a quarter cup of ketchup, a quarter cup of A1 steak sauce, one and a half tablespoons of whole grain mustard, and then I have here two um, sun-dried tomatoes that I'm going to first dice up and then I'll add them in and stir them in as well. We'll just stir this liquid, get everything combined really well. Now that that's ready there, the vegetables, I can see they're ready for the next step, which is adding the tomatoes. While those tomatoes are breaking down, uh, we're gonna prepare everything else. I've washed three pounds of new potatoes. These are baby potatoes. You wanna use some uh, smaller ones. I have six carrots of whatever color you want. And then also two turnips, which have a slight radish flavor, but it goes really, really good with beef. Last thing is just a handful of Italian parsley. Just gonna chop that up uh, fairly roughly. Okay, now we're gonna add the beef back in and just layer everything on top of it. We'll add our herbs in, just the uh, parsley. Put that right on top there. And then the cut vegetables, followed by the potatoes. Now, the last thing to add in there is our cooking liquid. We'll just pour that right over top. Turn that up to medium high. We're gonna bring that up uh, just to a boil. And as soon as it starts boiling, turn the heat off into the 325 degree oven for three hours. The last thing I wanna add is some green beans. I don't care for green beans cooked in it for a really long time. And I don't cut them up so that they're part of the pot roast. I like to just have them kind of as a side dish, but cooking them in with the pot roast, it just tastes really, really good. I have here just a little over a pound of uh, green beans just cut, and let's open this up, take a look. This has been in there for three hours. Ooh, yeah. All I'm gonna do is take these beans and just put them right across the top here 
and then we are going to cover it and put it back in the oven for another 30 minutes. And then the beans will be perfectly cooked, nice and tender with just a little bit of a bite. This is ready. Oh, warm. Let's take that out. That smells so good. So let's plate this up. Start by putting the beans just kind of right to the side here. And what you can do when you get here, you put a little pat of butter on it and that will just melt over the beans. It's really good. Next is the potatoes. And after this long of a cook, these potatoes, they are so just tender and like silky. The consistency on them is just out of this world. Got all the carrots and over here, and the turnips. Now for the meat, we'll just bring it all, stack it up there. The pack of herbs, make sure you take that out. That goes just in the garbage. I have here an immersion blender. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this sauce and we're gonna blend it until it's really smooth and that'll just get all those uh, the onions um, all the vegetables that we cut earlier for the sauce just break them down to make a really velvety smooth sauce now what we'll do is we'll pour the sauce right into a bowl and now we can take this spoon a little bit over top. So, there it is. An amazing pot roast. Maybe a little bit different, but still very reminiscent of the pot roast that you're probably used to. Uh, give it a try, let us know how you like it. We will link in the uh, captions to a full post with sources for some of the equipment that I've used and the full recipe.